टाइम फिर आपको सबके सामने कहना पड़ेगा ओके हु डजंट हैव दैट पासवर्ड राइट ओके सो इफ वी कैन स्टार्ट विद द सलावत पर मोहम्मद व आले मोहम्मद अल्लाहुम्मा सल्ली अला मोहम्मद व आले So I want to welcome you all. I'm uh, very, very pleased to be here in Boston, Boston with all of you, a community that's very close to my heart because I used to live here uh, 20 years ago, and uh, have seen this mosque come up, and uh, it's a very, very reassuring and heartwarming thing to see how wonderful it looks. The community has taken such good care of it. So in these days of Ayami Azab, um, as we commemorate uh, the uh, the tragic. and brutal martyrdom of uh, Bibi Fatima Fi Zahra Salamullahi Alayha Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad um, It is um, It's an opportunity for us Oh wait, I, I know, it's an opportunity for us to uh, really uh, learn from her life And that is why I, to- uh, I chose this topic today of um, marriage It looks strange because we wonder in these days of grieving why are we talking about marriage but that's uh, also one of the um, policies that we fall into where we think marriage is all about celebration and about um, you know hasi uh, maza or uh, and, and and when we are in ayam of aza that we shouldn't be talking about marriage but marriage is the foundation of our society family is the foundation and it can only be made if marriages are not then how will we have a family And so it's so important in these days when we are remembering the great personality of Bibi Fatima alayhi salam that we remember her legacy that she left behind and we rem- and we remember what she left behind for us so that we as women can be inspired and men as well Bibi Fatima alayhi salam is an inspiration for men and women men and women and uh, we need to look at every aspect of her life and we cannot say enough about her and i'm so thankful that we have had this opportunity today and inshallah now that it's being taped that many more people can benefit from this because the marriage of bibi fatima alayhi salam and imam ali alayhi salam stands in history as the most beautiful relationship that uh, one can see that we here have these two amazing individuals and they come together and look at how prolific their lives are that they leave behind an, a legacy of all these beautiful children who have become leaders of the world and um, we also um, can learn so much from them and we need to remember that these are examples for us to follow it's not that oh this was ali and fatima and that's them we can't do it we sure can and they're examples for us so that we can follow in their footsteps. I wonder if we can turn up this mic. I feel like I have to speak a bit louder. Is one bike can you turn up turn turn up the microphone? Yeah, I think you heard, right? Uh, can you turn it up a little the sound? Is it possible? Thank you. So, look at the title here. Marriage a means to attain Allah's pleasure. I thought marriage was about our pleasure. Right? Then we think that oh, I want to find this man who will be the prince of my dreams i'll marry this girl who will make me happy when i look at her truly marriage is all that but our mistake is when we think that marriage is only that and in fact everything that we do on this earth is a way to get closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hadith is that you see all tell us that so whenever you look at something and you're trying to decide whether you should do it or not ask yourself is this going to bring me closer to god or away from it Unfortunately, marriage often because of the choices we make, the people we marry, and the mistakes and the decisions we do in our marriages can become a way to attain Allah's displeasure. And so it's very important that we look at how a marriage will take us closer and how we can take the steps to be on the sirat al-mustaqim towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. So today we're not going to be not thinking about bibi fatima alayhi salam we are these are the days of fatimia we're going to see what kind of wife she was as well as the other examples that we have in our history you know the famous saying when um 
when they got married. Bibi Fatima alayhi salam and Imam Ali alayhi salam when they got married. The next a few days or next day, um, we hear that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he asks Imam Ali alayhi salam. He says, Ya Ali, how did you find my daughter as a wife? And this is the answer Imam Ali alayhi salam gives. He says, Ya Rasulullah, in serving my Lord, there couldn't be a better partner than Fatima. What an amazing answer. When somebody asks us, oh, you're married, how's it going? What do we say? Oh, he takes such good care of me. He's so wonderful. He brings me flowers, right? Oh, she cooks great food, mom. She cleans the house. She takes care of me. That's all very selfish. It's all about us. Imam Ali alayhi salam refocuses the attention towards where it should be and how we should be thinking. That is something taking me closer to Allah or not. And in this answer, he's teaching us that when you look at your spouse, look at a future spouse, look at how this person, inshallah, is going to help you on the Sirat al Mustaqim. We're on the journey of life. We hear about this journey of life. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We've come from him, we're going back to him. We're on this journey. On this journey, as we are on, inshallah, the Sirat al Mustaqim. What a mistake if you choose someone who's off the beaten path, who's on a road, God forbid, to hell. And you say, but he's so gorgeous. You know, she's so beautiful. Yeah, but I love her. Yeah, so still they believe in 300 gods and I believe in one. That's okay. We love each other. And that's where we make the mistake. Because we think this is about us. But the journey of life is about going back to God. And about coming to him with a better person than we were when we started. And when you look for a Jeevan Sati, as the Indians like to, you know, the, you see that in the Indian movies and everything, you know, the Jeevan Sati, it's all about being here, living here on this earth. It's about a companion who takes you to heaven. It's not about living on this earth. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks his daughter, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, Ya yeah, Fatima, how did you find Ali? And she says, oh my father, in serving God, there couldn't be a better spouse than Ali. Shows that this is what her focus was in life as well. This is what she lived for. And she was looking for someone who will teach her more, inshallah. And he's looking for someone who will teach her more, inshallah. When you're looking for a spouse, you're looking for someone who will make you a better Muslim. And yes, we teach each other, but if we have to start, start from scratch, then how are we going to get to a sophisticated level? When you have to be dragging this person towards Iman, instead of enhancing each other's Iman, there's a big difference there. So always, always look way past the shallow things. You know, I look back at all the young people that I used to know 20 years ago. Now you know how old I must really be. But when I look at all those gorgeous men and women from those times, we all are fat. And we're all and the men are all bald, right? Everyone looks pretty frumpy. They're like, yeah, whatever. These people were Bollywood stars once upon a time. But look at them now. Because everyone is gonna look different. But when you choose somebody for looks, it's nice if they look good. But if you only chose them for looks, it's gonna go. And then you're looking at this person who's no longer that gorgeous person you married, but there was no beauty in the heart. And you blame yourself. Talk to so many people who say the mistake was mine, they say. I chose a guy who was modern, who was this, who was that. So if he does, if he's going with another woman, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's hanging out in nightclubs, it's my fault. Because I chose that kind of guy. So, so important that we realize and ask ourselves, Pele, where is my focus? Where am I going? And who do I want to go on that path with me? You want a spouse that if you say, my mom needs me and I need to go and take her to the doctor, that he has enough religion in his mind and in his heart and his soul that he says, yes, ma bab, he khidmat ibadat him. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that from us. But if you're marrying a man who doesn't have Islam in his heart, he won't give you that kind of answer. And if he doesn't, 
chances are he hasn't understood Islam. Right? True mu'min will say, let's serve your parents and my parents together. Let's be better people. A good spouse says, you are not being the perfect daughter. I want to be a son to your mother and I will fill in the void for you. And vice versa. And that is the true way to serve God. Because you serve people, but that is for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And such an amazing match that Jibreel says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this famous sentence, right? And he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Rasulullah, if I had not created Ali, it wouldn't have been a match for your daughter Fatima on the face of the earth. We're looking at these two incredible human beings coming together. And inshallah, when we're choosing spouses, we're also looking much more beyond, oh, don't have a career, don't know doctors, hain. don't know paise wale hain. don't know ye hain. don't know wo hain. Sometimes we, we really get caught up in these things and uh, we don't look at the essence. When somebody asked the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he asked that, uh, what kind of spouse should I choose? The answer was, choose somebody who fears God. Because you're always thinking, is my Lord happy with you, with me or not? Somebody asked Imam Ali alayhi salam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, you live so close to the Holy Prophet, what did you see about him? I mean, you, you were there all the time. Who was his quality? And he said, one thing I noticed about my, my prophet, amazing prophet that I had, and the person that I could learn from, was that every time something came in front of him, he would ask, I like this, but does my Lord like it or not? That was his litmus test. So we have these two things to look at. Does this thing bring me closer to God? And second, does my God like it or not? And you know, the, the scholars tell us that there are levels of faith, Iman. The lowest level is when you do something because God said do it or not do it, right? Haram, halal, wajib, makru, and we are the ones who split hairs. It's not haram, it's makru. We look at all these little loopholes. The true level of Iman is not that it's that Allah like it or not, but you get to such a point where you ask yourself, it's allowed, but maybe... Even so, I might do something that will displease my God, doing something that is halal. Okay, halal cheese we if we do too much of, it it can border on infringing the rights of other people in your in your life. For example, too much ibadat, you can say there is such a thing. A woman's already always on the masala, but the family is suffering because the food is not being cooked. Or the husband who wants to be all, uh, doing so much ibadat but doesn't want to get a job. Because these are our roles in life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to fulfill so that there is balance and everything in moderation. So asking ourselves, this is halal, but if there is a chance, and some scholars are saying, it could be makru, then I don't want to do it because that's the level of love I have for my Lord. Imagine being married to someone who takes you on a path of always thinking about loving God and doing the right thing who has such a conscience that they make our conscience bite who say ye acha nahi hua jo hua jo humne keh diya jo humne soch liya jo jis cheez ko humne chhod diya ye acha nahi hua and let's you and I go back and fix it that's the amazing person we want to look for in our lives so then as we talked about it how is this a way to attain Allah's pleasure you were looking for somebody who will help you do ibadat together. But it's beyond that. Somebody who will help you sacrifice together. So let's spend a little bit less so that we can, let's say, have a majlis at home. So we can save money for a ziyarat trip. Let's do this much so that we can have our children the best Quran teacher in the world. All right? When you're making those kinds of decisions, somebody who wants to sacrifice with you and who who actually is your partner in allowing you to find all the gifts that you have and then saying now give it give it to the world because otherwise that person can actually become an obstacle on your path 
to serving God. Say, nahi jana hai, nahi karna hai, chhod do, yeh. That, you know, here we are trying to avoid shaitan, where we become each other's shaitan. And we are not helping each other do nahi al mukar, right? We're not helping each other do all these things. Uh, it's really, it's a scary thing. And this is our motto in life. That surely everything about me, my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Kul inni, kul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya wa mamati. Lillahi rabbil alameen. And when both of us are with that same pledge towards God, then the path becomes so much more beautiful. So spouse selection is so important. There have be shared goals, shared principles, shared values. But these are all situated with an Islamic, with an Islamic standpoint. So it's like, I like this because Allah likes this. It's not all about this. This is what I want to see myself in 10 years. I want to be this. I want to be that but because I want to serve God eventually. So that kind of person who shares these values and someone we can walk on that sirat mustaqim with, let's look at this beautiful marriage of our Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Bibi Khadija Alayhi Salam. Um, and we see, and these are um, the words of this beautiful, um, such, a, such a good, Marhum was such an amazing writer. Um, he's written the book, uh, Restatement of Islam and the Muslim. And uh, he passed away uh, of cancer. He lived in New Jersey. Uh, so, and I, I had the honor of meeting him, uh, a truly a, a, a very good writer. And there's a book about Bibi Khadija. You can find it on Islam.org um, and you read it online. So he writes that at 25, you know, the Holy, Holy Prophet was united in these uh, holy bonds of wedlock with Khadija, the great, the noble lady. And look at this lady who marries a man who has nothing and yet has everything. Because she sees beyond the career, the money, the status, the this, the that. Things are, we get attacked on these things. But Bibi has seen something else. She has seen a good look. She has seen a man who doesn't say the truth. She is so responsible, so trustworthy. That she can give him this huge responsibility and know that he will never do anything wrong without money. God forbid. So she befriends him when he has nothing. And she trusts him when so his worth is not known. That's the kind of person you want to be with. Somebody who loves you, not even for your potential, but for what you are right now. Bari mistake hum do I'll marry I'll marry him, I'll fix him. She'll stop he'll stop smoking. She'll stop doing this, you know, yep, karti, wo karti, I karunga. I swear to you, I once was driving a couple to a marriage. They were doing their civil ceremony before the actual nikah. And I swear, we have, we, there were arguments at the city hall when they were signing. And when I was driving them back, and the, the young man was in my car, he was hitting the dashboard and he's saying, wait till she becomes mine. I'll fix her. I was like, what? And I was a young girl at that time. And I said, how in the world at this point can a person make this kind of, he was so angry and he was so focused on what she wasn't and how he was going to sort it out with, with strength. Needless to say that marriage didn't last. But it's so sad that we think that we are we're marrying people who are a project for us. You know, it's like those houses that we say it's a fixer-upper. Human beings are not easy to, to change. Have we changed? Are we able to stop nail biting even our little habits that we do? Don't. Did you open this one? Please. Thank you. God bless you. And um, so here she, she was. Thank you. She, he, she trusted him and, he, and his worth wasn't known. And she encouraged and understood him in his spiritual struggles. We are unable to sometimes help our spouses when they're just trying to change careers. When they're struggling with arguing with people in the family or or in the community we can't even be there for them when they are struggling with unemployment or feeling a midlife crisis or depression sometimes people have unexplained clinical depression we, we say you know get over it sometimes we're grieving and our spouses are just saying like get on with it now 
you cried enough. And here was a woman who said, I believe you. You say the angel came and spoke to you? I'm with you. And when a woman or a man can say that to their spouse, I believe in you. I'm with you. Truly, that person can conquer. They can conquer the world. As they say, every behind every great man is a great woman. That's what it's about. And it's the other thing, the other way around as well. Behind every great woman is a great man. We couldn't do what we do if our spouses weren't supporting us. I once interviewed a man who had tried to, uh, um, who had tried to commit suicide, and he was uh, a man who had who he had a doctor's degree, but he couldn't practice here in the West. And he said, you know, when a man is leaving the house, and if his family says to him, whatever happens, I'm with you. You'll be fine. You'll, you're good. You're great. He said, you know, you can go out there, and even if you're you get, even if you are going with an army that's not very strong, you still feel that you can do it. And that, that, that motivation makes you go forward. But if your family says, oh, here you are with one of your foolish dreams, you're going to mess up again. He said, even if you had the strongest army with you, your morale is low. So choosing human beings who have this, and that requires us to look beyond just their credentials and their resumes. Spouse selection is important where you're looking at somebody and seeing how they treat the children in the mosque. How do they treat their own mother? Do you understand that your mother respect not give respect? Does she give respect to our mother? Look at how they treat their own siblings and there is something to learn here. How do we treat our own siblings? Our younger sister or brother should be able to come to us and say, I have a problem. And we could be there for them. But if we are always scolding and yelling at them or making them feel unworthy, and how will we be good people for our sisters-in-law and our brothers-in-law? They were saying, we have to be good people now with our own family so that we can be better people when, we are, uh, when, we're, when we're getting into a bigger family. And then as soon as he entered the house, and this is, this is documented, and he, the Prophet would say that when I would enter the house, she would greet me with a smile. And you know what that would happen is that all my sorrows would be gone. And she spoke words of cheer, hope, and comfort, and all his anxieties and fears vanished. And we don't believe that, but there is a great power in our smiles. I didn't realize it until once I saw my husband asking the kids, how's mommy's mood today? And I was like, what? He cares about my mood? But I realized that he then figures out whether he should tiptoe. I'm not like that. But you know what I mean. Then, you know, he's thinking, okay, mizaj kya hai? Zanab ka. Then, you know, then we know whether to smile or not. And our mood can affect that other person's mood. So how beautiful when a woman realizes that no matter what's going on between us, right now it's about you coming home and feeling that this is your haven. This It's a fortress against the world's troubles. This is not the place of trouble. Where you regret coming home. That when I go in there, there's a bigger tyrant waiting for me inside than the boss that I spent with all day. Time home. We have some minutes. And so Bibi Khadija salam encouraged her husband. And look at what she said, documented again. O oh, son of my uncle, be of good cheer. Allah has chosen you to be his messenger. You are always kind to your neighbors. Look at what she's doing. She's bringing his self-esteem up. She's reminding him, you are a wonderful person. If they are saying, na'udhu billah, that you are majnu, you're this, you're that. They said all sorts of things. They threw stones, they threw garbage. They, they questioned his motives. She said, no, you're not like that because I know what you're like. You're good to your neighbors, you're helpful to your family, you're generous to the orphans, the widows, the poor, you're friendly to the strangers. Allah will never forsake you. Look at this. A woman who has faith will be able to spread the faith. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? That everybody, everybody's in a loss. When then it goes on to say, the word tawasu is to say that these people are not just staying on the haq, they're encouraging others to be on the haq. 
They're not only doing sabr, they're reminding others to do sabr. We're examples to others when we do sabr. But it's also important to articulate it and to say, it's good. I'm not suffering. My God is with me. And God is with you too. If I can do this, you can do it. That's that's the person who is not in loss because they have spread the good cheer and they have encouraged others to keep going. Beautiful question asked by uh, Nabi Isa alayhi salam, by his disciples. They asked him, Ya Isa Ruhillah, who, who should we choose to be our friend, our companion, our wife? What kind of person? And he says, look at these three things. This is the person that when you look at them, they remind you of God. When you marry somebody, you marry a woman who's dressed in hijab, she's reminding you of what you are. When you have a husband who is doing things that are always, always pi piety related, that person is reminding you to the higher power we're, we're supposed to be answering to. So that person reminds you, you look at them and they remind you. For their words, when they speak, they take you closer to God. They enhance your knowledge. And what happens? Their work, the things they do always are about the akhirah. And they make you crave it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, He said, crave for Jannah. Want it. As if you can taste it. Beg for it. Ask for it. Need it. Jannat ki talab rakho. And he said, Ki ek tumhe tukra bhi adar mil jai na. Even a little tiny, tiny corner. The whole world cannot compare to that little tiny corner. Want it and create that hunger and thirst in your loved ones for the same. Hey, we're in this together. We're in a race and we have to get that gold at the end of the rainbow. It's not only for here. There's an akhirat. That's why you see entire families when they are volunteers, the whole family is a volunteer. Because it is, it's, it's what the family is about. Because the parents are in the same frame of mind. So here we then go to the daughter of Bibi Khadija alayhi salam. When the mother is like that, then the daughter. And somebody, you know, was just reminding me today about how, you know, if you want to know what kind of wife this woman's going to be, look at her mother. Don't we, even when we are far away from home, we say, Mommy, ye karti. I remember when I moved to Boston, I had kunde. Because I said, Mommy used to do this. And you know, Imam Bakir has said, that this is one of the sawab jariya that parents leave. That when we have good rituals and customs and traditions, ke, um, uh, you know, garibon ko baantna, ye karna, wo karna, to we sometimes say, meri maa ye karti thi. And I, I never understood it, but now I do it in her honor, in her tradition. That those people who are begging at our door now should not feel that she's no longer here. And Imam says, that's why it's so important that mothers and fathers establish such traditions in the home. Because even though our kids look like they don't care, there'll come a time that they will. It'll all make sense to them. So this is by um, Dr. Ali Shariati, and he's written a book, Fatima is Fatima. This is a quote from there, and he says that Fatima was not just a wife to Ali. Ali looked upon her as a friend, a friend who was familiar with his pains and his great wishes. She was his endless, endless refuge. Refuge kya hota hai? Ek jaga, ek pana. Ki jab insan dukh ke maare, ghar paunche. To usse pata hai ki usse ek jaga milegi pana ki. A place where the person will say, I believe in you, I care about you. And I'll protect you. The one who listened to his secrets was the only companion of his loneliness. These ayami azab that we hear about, we be struggling. She wasn't just physically sick. And it wasn't only about Fadak, it was about much deeper things. History tells us that if she had, and they were asked, why didn't you give it to her? They said, you don't understand. If we had given Fadak, it meant that we had to do it, do the, do the Caliphate as well. We had to have to give, it, give that as well. Because it was a deeper thing. She was saying, I know what my father said. So take my word for it. So if they said, yes, your word is right, then she says, then the word of Ali was right too. And you were there, and you know it. And Bibi spent days uh, in great pain. 
they said that she couldn't walk properly because she was very injured in many ways and that she was history tells us she used to drag her feet because she couldn't walk properly she was shuffling so maybe then there was nerve damage something had really really gone wrong that an 18 year old woman could not walk and that she was dragging one leg as she was walking and she had trouble breathing because her ribs were broken and what was she doing not crying just for her own sorrow when somebody cries, people gather. They say, why are you crying? Like they did with our fourth Imam, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Like they did with Bibi Zainab alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala amin. These tears, ye inkalab latehin. Today, that is the revolution that still is going on. That we ask, why was she crying? Why did she need a place to cry, to sit and show the world? that you're not even letting me cry at home. My tears are making them guilty. And what was she doing? Shuffling her feet and trying to walk when she should be in bed. Knocking on people's doors and saying, weren't you there? Weren't you the one who had shook, you shook hands with Ali and you had congratulated him that he's your mola. What happened to you? And people wouldn't open their door, they were so embarrassed. So when we look here that she was the woman who was his refuge and she was his only companion and she knew his pains she was fighting for his rights and when he passed away when she passed away imam ali alayhi salam at the grave of fatima cries and he says now the two people who used to take care of me are gone ahmad and fatima these were my best friends they're the only people i could trust the only people and when these people are asked, why didn't you kill Ali that day? They said, how could we when the daughter of the Prophet was alive? She is the one who saved him from that day by putting herself in danger. That is a loyal woman. Who doesn't care what the world says. Who doesn't care if they're going to kill her. Which they did. But she said, I will be the supporter I will be known forever as a woman who stood by her man so marriage is the remembrance of God would you believe it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa kathiran la tuflihun. remember Allah much that you may be successful Har waqt khuda ki ra ra karo. Zikr Allah karo. marriage is remembrance of God yes why because what is remembrance of God is it saying tasbih that's remembrance is it doing namaz Remembrance. But remembrance also is when you do anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you. Forgive somebody. Why did you do it? Because you remembered Allah loves those who forgive. Give charity. You did dhikrullah. Because you remembered that Allah loves those who do charity. Marriage is a hundred percent. Twenty-four hours. Seven days a week. Three hundred and sixty-five days a year remembrance of God because you know what after a while it's not about that person you're not doing it because you love that person or you even love your children you're all a pain in the neck after a while you do it because Allah is expecting that of you that is your ibadat so marriage is the perfect way it's not only serving and attaining Allah's pleasure it's not only becoming the best it's becoming mature in such a way that you become the ashraf al makhluqat the best that Allah has created. You'll see people who are not married, there's a certain kind of khudgarzi in them. Right? They live for themselves. Like, I don't like children. I don't like people who do this. I cannot live with a roommate. I this and I that. Because you become so comfortable with yourself. You cannot take any. That's why when you wait too long to marry, you become so set in your ways, it is hard to live with anybody. Look what marriage asks of us. And the list goes on. Right? Love, we think. I love you enough that you will never miss the parents that you ran away from. You are right. Think again. I will give you so much that you will never... You know, I, I talked to a lady when we were in Hosa and Kum. She married her husband. She was a Wahhabi. She left her family for him. And she says, he's given me so much love. That's true. That I never forget them. That I can never forget. Uh, I can never remember... But she says, I still have nightmares. I still have, I'm on antidepressants. Depressant. She has five children. She's a grown woman. But she says, that family that I left behind, it still gnaws at me. That they don't want to be with me and they'll never forgive me. So 
nothing can make up for anything else. No human being can fill a void. Don't marry somebody that they complete you. No, you are 100%. They are 100%. Together, you have to be 200%. Because you have to do a lot together. Don't settle for somebody and say, oh, I love you so much that it'll make up for all these holes. Some holes are really huge. And you can't go forward. That person doesn't have love, mercy. You need to be caring. That guy who can leave his parents and who can you know, hurt his father and his beats up his brother, breaks his leg. It happens. And then you expect him to be the loving husband and not a child abuser when he becomes a father. The person who punches people in the high school hallways has not learned anger management. Oh, but he's so good looking, right? And he's got this, oh, he's such a macho man. He beats up people. Mm. Eventually, that's going to be you. That'll be his punching bag. So kindness, compassion, tenderness. The person who says, I see somebody begging. I don't care if he's poor or not, if he's pretending. I care what Allah will see. Did I respond to this poor person? That's a person who has some tenderness in him. Humility, forgiveness, flexibility. This kind of person who comes to the mosque and somebody says, ye utaw, ye karo, wo karo, and they're not like, I'm not doing that. Like you karo. But a boy that it is a majlis, that you can expect him that he's going to be helping serve. He's not so good looking that he doesn't even want to spoil his hair. Right? They are such guys. And that his six packs are so important that he has to go to the gym. doesn't matter if there's a much this at home or this or that because hey, hey, my baby body, I have to work on it. That's a person who has not understood his priorities. So tolerance, nurturance, positive thinking, controlling anger, fairness. You know, if you look at all these things, Keeping secrets, not backbiting, caring for... This is all, not just marriage, this is Islam. Islam asks us to do all of this and more. And that is why when you marry and you are doing all this, keeping his secrets, forgiving, being tolerant, for serving his family, being kind and care, no matter how cruel everybody is to each other, being humble, nurturing, this, that, that is it's Islam. That is the human being Allah is looking for. And marriage becomes a way to attain the pleasure of Allah. Being married also encourages us to be ethical. And saying, you know what? Allah, what do you want me to do here? Here's a mother-in-law, God forbid, who's done this, 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 and this. What am I supposed to do in this position? And it means being ethical and saying, insaniyat. Whatever she does, she'll answer her Lord. I have to do what Allah loves me to do. Always looking up for guidance and saying what's ethical and that is why remembering that that spouse is not just your spouse they are on loan from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether it's a woman or a man men also get emotionally abused in marriage physically sometimes too and what does the prophet say when he marries the, his daughter to his, his beautiful son-in-law cousin and his successor I mean, these are the most precious people in his life. So he says, he takes Fatima's hand, puts it in Ali's, and he says, I have entrusted Fatima to you. You're responsible for, well, responsible for her. Ali, what an excellent wife Fatima is. She's given by God to you. And then he says, Fatima, this is Ali. You are responsible for her. I entrust her to you. Fatima, look at what an excellent husband you have. And this thing goes on. He prays for them. He says, you know, Allah bless them, bless their children. Oh, surely they are the most beloved to me from among your creatures. So love them too and assign for them a guardian. I place them and their progeny under your protection from the cursed devil. When Bibi Ali Salam passes away and Imam Ali Ali Salam is at her grave, this theme of entrusting comes back. And then he says, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. He says, your trust, Ya Rasulullah, aki amanat ab." You entrusted her to me. Allah has taken back what was not mine. When a person is ethical like that, they understand how to take care of something that is a blessing to them. You don't hurt the woman who has been given to you by her family and who is God's creature. She is something that Allah has given as a blessing in your home. 
And he says, sorrow now abides with me and happiness has taken leave. By Allah, this is something he says in Nahj al Imagine a man being able to say this. A man who is so pure and so tr trustworthy and truthful. Never would he say something that did not. I never angered Fatima or forced her to do something that she did not like up to the day she died, nor did she ever anger or disobey me. In fact, when I looked at her, depression and sadness would be removed from my heart. And when she asked her father, Oh, father, what, what should I do as a wife? What are my duties? Not what are my rights. Nowadays, girls are making these long nuptial, prenuptial, uh, you know, yeah, Islam gives me this right, this right, this right. Yeah, definitely. But Islam also says, go beyond yourself and serve and be nurturing and be kind and be loving. This kind of feminist behavior is Islamic, that a woman has rights. But Islam also smoothens and softens our hard edges by saying, yes, ye tumara haq hai, lekin agar tum kisi ki khidmat karoge, halakke tumhe isko par wajib bhi nahi to tumhe itna kuch de denge, tum mala mal ho jaoge. Case in point, a woman doesn't have to nurse her baby. She can say to her husband, I don't want to give my milk to this child. For whatever reason. But she can do it as an ihsan. And then the hadith comes that the woman who feeds her baby every drop of that milk, what sawab there is for her. So on one hand, Allah is saying you don't have to. In fact, you can ask for payment for this because it's an effort. It's hard on a woman. But if you do it without any compensation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will compensate you for every drop. And when she finishes her whole, uh, the whole breastfeeding time, then an angel comes and sits beside her and gives her good news and congratulates her that she has attained Jannah. She has attained an elevated status. So look at how Islam softens our edges. He says, do, God says, do it because it pleases me. So, O oh, Fatima, a woman who demands things which are outside the means of her husband, is removed from the pale of divine grace. That you know, I want the you know, look, everybody has a big house, everybody has a BMW, everybody has this, the such and and then he doesn't even fight. He works because he wants to see that smile. He's seeing that she's burning. That she's looking at other women and she's, you know, when we see our children, sometimes we get this way. If we see a balloon, a gubara, we're like, how can I give this? Do you remember that story, right? Of Ali, and he had that gubara in Toronto. So, you know, we're like, how do we give it to him? That, that you know, we can make him smile. This is what husbands feel. They have this great sense of responsibility. And a woman who says, I need to have this, that, and the other, really puts a great demand. And sometimes these men do get heart attacks and they do end up, God forbid, stealing, cutting corners, doing fraud and this kind of stuff. Something motivated them. But a woman who says, Nay chahiye ye sab. Aadi roti kafi hai. Lekin halal rizq ho. And it means that you are home. You're not suffering day and night. And see, Islam gives us this. A woman who's demanding even from day one. Marriage is not happened, but I want that. We're missing the boat here. We're not understanding what Islam is about. Being married means true humility. A woman who says to her husband, Rasulullah says, that you know, ye mere paise hain. Ye mere, mere daddy ke paise hain. Ye jo tum pehne ho, ye jo khate ho. Mere daddy ne tumhe business khol diya. Ye wo. Then you know what? She wouldn't want to see a glimpse of paradise. Because ye acha nahi lagta. And it doesn't look good on a man to say, ye mera ghar hai. You know, how long is she going to be married to you until you say, ye tumhara ghar hai. So we have to be careful what we say. You know, mere bachin. Let's, let's watch what we say. Because these things hurt and they cut like a knife. Selflessness. Allah has given us this, you know, status of attaining Jannah under our feet. Neglect the whole world rather than your partner. Rarely there's a right of your wife over you. Selflessness. Sab kuch jo bhi hai mere bachon ke liye hai, mere bhi ke liye hai, mere shohar ke liye hai. The last thing that we find Bibi Fatima alayhi salam says the day she cleans the house, last day of her life. And when Imam Ali alayhi salam says, Fatima, you should be in bed. You are not well. She says, Ya Ali, if I have even a little bit energy, 
I want it to be for my children. My children and my family. I've been unwell and they're missing my cooking. The house is not clean. So thodi bhi agar energy ho to main apne bachon ke liye. And you know what? This culture makes us feel like well, I'm not a maid. Why should I do it? You should do it too. Definitely there has to be division of labor and traditions Hadith tell us that the Holy Prophet and Imam Ali alayhi salam used to help Bibi Fatima alayhi salam. Taki peace ke liye, bachon ka, bachi, bachon ki khidmat karna aur dek bhal karna. Yeh sab kuch. Sab ne kiya saath. It was no, oh, this is not a woman's or man's job, right? But the, your wife does have a right over you. And a woman's biggest gift that Allah gives her is she can spread happiness and light. A smile from her and the house is beautiful. She's in a good mood and and it seems like you can hear that the walls are singing. And so, Imam Bakir alayhi salam has said, Mr. Salawat, that shahat bibi bhi karti hai. On the day of judgment, the wife will be asked, do you think this man deserves to go to Jannah? And the wife, and on those days we have to be telling truth, eh? The day of judgment, hands, feet, everything will be telling the truth. Gawahi aurat degi ke ya khuda ya Allah beshak is admi ne mera haq. He has given it to me. He has loved me. He has been loyal. He has not hit me. He has not hit the children. He has brought halal rizq. He has been faithful, loyal, and kind. So this is especially for our brothers. That if you're kind to your wife, ye aurat dunya mein to kaam aai hai. Lekin, roze qayamat khas kaam aai hai. Because her, her intercession is very, is, 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 um, uh, and, and, and uh, vice versa. As we see Imam is saying here that the, the, the husband will also say that yes, she deserves it. She deserves it. Uh, forbearance. Sabar na kul karna, reliance. This is all in marriage. We wouldn't survive if we couldn't do all this. And what happens? That is Islam. That's how we get closer to Allah. Respecting Allah loves this. Being, you know, not telling lies and telling stories about our family, our husband. And it's so important that we mothers tell our daughters. Uh, in, a, in a diplomatic way, sometimes let's change the topic. So that she doesn't tell us, This is gibbet. And, uh, you know, just because we put our daughter in somebody's home doesn't give us the right to now know all their secrets and spread it around. That in ghar pe ye bhi hota hai, wo hota hai. We have to be so careful. So being kind, these are all things that... And the wife who wakes up at night to feed her husband, 12 years of ibadat. So here it is, she doesn't have to do this. But when she does, look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I like this in you. Don't, don't call yourself a, a maid or think that, hey, I should get compensated, I should be... A thank you, Bini Bola. If it wasn't too low for Bibi Fatima alayhi salam to do if that was what she saw was her crowning glory, then it's not too small for us to do. It's quite something. And what did the, boy, the husband of Bibi Zainab salam say? He said she was the best housewife. Imagine. These are amazing women. They were princesses. But just we talked about the, the, um, the nursing. Um, I want to quickly just get to the end here because I'm running out of, I have a few minutes left. So controlling argument. Marriage is all about forgiveness. You can't be a forgiving person, you can't have a, a marriage. So this just won't do. It's full of being forgiven. And if you can't forgive people right now, learn work on this. Because when you keep it in your heart, it builds up so badly that it's all that there is is resentment that's left over. And the Prophet says, if you can discard an argument, you're right. But you say, you know, let it go. Let's choose our battles. You're earning a place in Jannah. Because anger is the root of all arguments. And the Prophet said, control your anger. And of course, yelling is like a sound of a donkey, as Luqman said. So being thankful, being positive, resolving argument, Imam Ali alayhi salam says the best of a woman. And he says, don't leave somebody until you find out why they're mad at you. Jab courtship ka waqt hota we always like, kyun khafa ho, kaho, kyun naraz ho. You know, we run around each other sending sorry and, and flowers. But after marriage, it's like, oh, here he is with his wounds again, who cares? You know, oh, isko to bas yehi hota hai, you know? She's always sulking. Let's not do that because this is how it builds up. Let's not sulk and then let's not leave somebody when they're upset. Because Imam says, 
that the woman, one of the best qualities, one of her qualities is that when her husband is anger, angry or depressed, she won't leave him until he's in a good mood. And, you know, the person who can forgive, very humble person. Uh, what it, um, last words of Bibi Fatima, alayhi salam. She asked him, Ya Ali, I want to ask you something. Have I ever lied? Have I ever not been devoted enough? Have I disobeyed you since I've become your companion? Look at what a woman who is passing away, this is what's most important to her. She's saying, are you happy with me, Ya Ali? And that's a beautiful lesson for us to learn. Marriage is about making this life companion feel that it was worth this journey. And he said, you are more knowing of Allah, more devoted, more pious, more honorable, more fearing of Allah. I had no reason to ever reprimand you. You've never disobeyed me. And uh, these are her also her last words. And she says, let not my death dishearten you, Ya Ali. She's encouraging him even as she is leaving an ummah that has disappointed her greatly. But she says, don't let it stop you from being the good man that you are, Ya Ali. Keep serving. Let not my sufferings make you bitter. Promise me. And he says, I promise you. So in this case, we see here that she's even at the end saying uh, that, you know, um, you have a tender heart. Don't cry too much. And, you know, you'll have to bear more, Ali. And he says, surely it's very painful to be separated from you, but it's an inevitable destination. And then he says, Ya Fatima, when you... When you talk like this and when you say goodbye to me, you have brought back that pain that I have suffered when your dad left this world and Rasulullah left me. And he said, Fatima, you are leaving me. How can I live without you? And we find that they both cried a lot. They both cried and they said goodbye. And he said, what a painful, bitter and sad calamity. He said, this is the biggest devastation for me, Fatima, the biggest tragedy that you're leaving me. And, and, he, and they both uh, cry and he says, nothing will console me. I swear to you, I'll never find rest in this world. And then she, when she asks you, she asks him to, uh, to be strong. We find that when, she, when he buries her at her grave, he cries in such a way that the Lion of God, this strong Ali, who had carried the door of Khaybar, that he couldn't walk, and that he had to be supported at that graveyard. He was staggering. And he cries and he says that, he says, the death, oh ya Rasulullah, the death of your daughter has left me without patience and solace. You know, you think that Imam is crying only about what they did to him, about the, about the wilaya that they couldn't give him. No, he's saying this is the biggest pain that I've lost Fatima, the most precious woman in my life. It's left me and I've lost my self-restraint and my power of endurance. And he says, now I have to bear this patiently, O Prophet of God. You know, I laid you down in the grave myself with my own hands. And, and now here, I have to give you back your daughter. And this grief is so overbearing, it engulfs me. And it swallows all the other sorrows. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, aapki beti, aapko sab batayegi. Ya Rasulullah, she's going to tell you what these people did to me. She's the witness of how they turned against me. She's the witness who will tell you how she, these people have killed our child. And how they have broken our hearts and they've turned away from us. And he says that, Fatima, your fragrance will be with me forever. And I will not rest until I myself will be in a grave right beside you. And he said that her fragrance lives with me forever. Something for us to learn. That we should be like a fragrance in our home. This beautiful scent that when we come, everything is much more beautiful. We bring spring to our homes. And that when we are gone... Nothing can ever compare to us. We leave such a legacy that no woman can ever compare, no mother can ever compare to what we were and the light we brought to our home. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability to be that, like the lady of light so we can bring light 
into our homes and uh, that we can all walk on the sirat al mustaqim ay khuda hum hum khas hamare bachon ke liye dua mang rahe hain ki unke acche naseeb ho aur acche rishte ho aise jeevan saathi unko mile jo sirat al mustaqim pe chalne ki unko taufeeq de oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask you to give guidance to our children that they don't select spouses based on just beauty and money and looks that they go much more beyond and they can learn from the example of the most most beautiful couple on earth and in the heavens baby fatima to zahra salam alayha alayha and imam ali alayhi salam sarwat muhammad muhammad wa ali muhammad salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad thank you so much for your time and inshallah now we're going to have salat Ashhadu an Muhammadar Rasulullah 
Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Ashhadu anna amiral mu'minina wa